ओम भूर्भुव स्वतुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो दीम धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओम शांति 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 नमस्ते दोस्तों नमस्ते नमस्ते आई विल डिस्क्राइब व्हाट इज जीवन मुक्ति और लिबरेशन सो आई विल स्टार्ट दिस प्लीज लिसन एंड concentrate and try to understand and contemplate this is a very very important practice in our life okay we all want unlimited happiness and work for it the means adopted to attain it are different for different people some think some think that happiness lies in getting rich and earning a lot of money some in sexual enjoyment some in acquisition of house property and possession of things capable of increasing their comfort and enjoyment some in marriage and having children etc all people work hard to attain happiness by adopting one or the other of the means described above but happiness eludes them more often than not as all these instruments for happiness result ultimately in causing misery and unhappiness on the contrary unforeseen accidents and calamities which we had never dreamed of face us all of a sudden in despair people cry out lord why all this to me what have i done to deserve this suffering sages and saints like vasishta and adi shankara have found that because of the wrong identification of the self with the body mind complex each person considers himself as the doer of all actions that is karta and the experiencer of their fruits that is bhukta this false identification results in considering oneself as a bound limited and finite individual which in its turn leads one to miseries sorrows and sufferings a child does not know that a bulb and the electricity in it are not one unit all differences in age from date of manufacture capacity that is what is form color place of origin manufacture and mortality due to breakage etc belong to the bulb and electricity in all the bulbs is only one continuous stream of energy similarly the unhappy people are ignorant that even though the bodies that is just like bulbs are different and subject to birth old age and death the consciousness in all the bodies is one and the same it is the mind which creates the false impression that each one is an individual entity by identifying the self with the bodies this is clear from the fact that during sleep when the mind ceases to work we are not aware of either the body or the individuality then we re- then we revel in the bliss of the totality of undifferentiated consciousness similarly pain and pleasure joy and sorrow happiness and suffering are all mere thoughts and fabrications of the mind due to the false identification of the self with the body mind complex any one who realizes the truth through self enquiry that is questioning who am i annihilation of the mind the non mind state called manonasa 
etc is able to de-link his self from the body and identify himself with the supreme consciousness that is sit sat chit ananda sat chit ananda and thus gets liberated from this illusion resulting in cessation of sorrows this state of liberation is called mukti and many believe that this state of perennial bliss can be attained only after death as a result of a lifetime of spiritual practice that is sadhana sri rama krishna pramhansa says why speak of god realization in the future it is here and now only the will that hides it has to be destroyed when the will falls to pieces that which eternally is science for the one self luminous the philosophy of non dualism that is advait vedanta preached by the upanishads as also sages like dattatre and adi sankara promises liberation while still alive and not necessarily one after death this liberation while living is called jivan mukti and those who have attained it are called jivan muktas pramhansa rama krishna and maharishi ramana these two sages they were jivan mukta and they have proved each and every aspect of upanishads true they were the real jivan muktas of the last century if liberation or mukti is to result only after death many would not be inclined to believe in it as nobody will be able to verify whether it really happened or not while on the other hand liberation while yet living is capable of direct verification this was way in case of pramhansa rama krishna and maharishi ramana all this phenomena was completely verified the who the one who is able to perceive the one eternal being only in all the individual being is called jivan mukta while bhagavat gita has not used the term jivan mukta as such some scholars believe that the other terms satita prajna steed fast in wisdom and guna pita one who has transcended the three modes sattva rajas and tamas are identical with jivan mukta the one who is aware of his identity with the supreme brahma which is immanent in all beings in an undifferentiated manner the same idea regarding the essence of jivan mukti has been forcefully brought out by adi sankara in his sarva vedanta sara sangraha thus i am the supreme being brahma i am the brahma i am the brahma i am the consciousness i am the consciousness the one who is fully convinced of this and remains as such is a jivan mukta in the fourth coming chapters while a brief mention will be made of the methods of becoming a jivan mukta which are no different from the entire gamut of sadhanas prescribed in the various religious spiritual texts and scripture for attaining liberation that is moksha the various distinguishing characteristics of a jivan mukta will be discussed in greater detail besides serving other purposes studying the common characteristics of a jivan mukta his inherent qualities his code of conduct how he behaves in the normal day to day life etc by itself constitutes one of the easy methods for attaining jivan mukti here and now what are the various means for attaining jivan mukti there are two major methods of sadhana for attaining jivan mukti number one with effort and the other without effort 
If one can get liberation without any physical or mental effort, who would be foolish enough to adopt sadhana's involving effort, which rituals, japa, chanting of mantras or sacred syllables, puja, formal worship of idols, etc., breath control, pranayama, observance of various disciplines like celibacy, non-violence, non-stealing, non-accumulation of possessions, etc. The matter is not so simple and the sages who have evolved such elaborate spiritual practices were certainly men of no mean wisdom. The following story will illustrate this point. A rich man, fully drunk and in a state of thorough intoxication, sitting in the drawing room of his own house in a city, Sedeli, called his car driver at 3 p.m. one day and ordered him to bring out the car from the garage and to take him to his house as it was quite late. The driver was perplexed and diffidently told his master, Sir, this is your own house where you are sitting. Where else should I take you? The master rebuked him, saying, I do not want drivers who argue with me. I want unquestioning implicit obedience. Do what I told you. The driver adopted a ruse. He drove his master through various distant parts of Delhi and brought him back to the same house by 10 p.m. The master felt happy and having come out of his inebriation exclaimed, Oh, now we have arrived. So long as we remain entangled in the multi-tentacles of illusions and delusions intoxicated by Maya, the divine will which is responsible for our wrong identification and consequent delusion, we have to start and proceed by the apparently tortuous and strenuous paths involving effort even though ultimately the seeker is the sort. When who is seeking? Atma. Whom the Atma is seeking? Himself. So seeker and the seeker. Huh? Sort. Same. Atma is seeking? Atma. When once in a particular birth we start with a mind already purified and spiritually mature, we shall be enabled to go by easier and direct paths where no effort is involved for example dissolution of all desires including for mukti by adopting a weakness attitude of choiceless perception and an unconditional acceptance of all occurrences and events good or bad favorable or unfavorable but Two primary means prescribed for Jivan Mukti are number one, dissolution of the mind and effacement of desires, that is Vasanas. The Upanishads declare that when once all the desires are obliterated thoroughly and nipped at the very source with the heart, the individual who is subject to birth and death becomes immortal. He attains self-realization here and now. The dissolution of desires leads one to a still mind, ultimately to the stage of no mind, when all thoughts cease permanently. Cessation of sorrows, freedom from fear, perennial peace and entitlement, all these rest on the dissolution of control of mind, mandukya karika of godapadacharya. The one way to control the mind is by gradual study of scriptures and philosophy giving rise to the conviction of the unreality of the objects of the world. This results in indifference and non-attachment to the worldly objects that is Vairagya. Seeking the company of evolved souls and sannyasins is also an equally effective method to bring about control of mind and effacement of desires. 
one of the most direct and instantaneous methods to achieve jivan mukti bypassing the aforesaid methods has been propounded by astavakra he was a great advait vedanti says he was during the days of king janaka have first that firm conviction that i am not the body mind complex know well that you are as separate from the body as electricity is from the bulb hence the limitations of the body death old age disease suffering etc do not apply to yourself the electrical energy inside a bulb can never be destroyed so let one practice sitting for a few hours each day absolutely relaxed and not necessarily in any particular posture in the garden or some place of solitude free from all distractions of visitors including mobile or other telephones etc used in modern times be aware of nothing else except the feeling of bare existence and being alive that is i am be happy in that feeling do not think of the body and do not add any qualification to the feeling of amness such as i am a woman i am aged 30 years i am an indian i am an engineer i am having headache etc simply be if your eyes are open do not see things specifically or distinguish the objects do not distinguish various noises remain in the totality of an uncritical unjudging undistinguishing and undifferentiated perception do not think i am just remain in the consciousness that is the feeling of your existence like a newborn child which has no vocabulary to think but revels in its pulsating existence if one can permanently remain in this state which can be attained through practice here and now one can get jivan mukti there are many more <coughs> such instant moksha capsules in astavakra gita samhita similarly if one contemplates daily on one or more of the more important common characteristics of inherent qualities of jivan mukta delineated in the next chapter allows it to seep into one's entire being and percolate into and permeate every cell of one's body and heart one will become a jivan mukta what is most important for attaining jivan mukti is to engage oneself solely in the pursuit of self knowledge in this path the main impediment is the mind which will not allow one to concentrate on the only goal for this purpose aggressive and suppressive methods will be of no avail the mind is mainly contaminated by attachment and hate hatred likes and dislikes feelings of enmity and love etc the refract and the refractory mind should be fondled and with gentle persuasive <coughs> persuasions brought to equipoise where it will remain as a silent witness repeated persistent and patient efforts for a long time will be necessary till one reaches the conviction of the one self immanent in all beings despite all the knowledge of the characteristics and inherent nature of a jivan mukta at the tip of our fingers it is not at all easy to spot out and recognize a jivan mukta from the multitude of people without the grace of supreme being and unless the jivan mukta wills it so the jabala upanishad speaks of jivan muktas as those who were no distinguishing insignia or marks to denote their caste tradition station in life that is householder or sanyasi or other categories 
and will have a non descript and very common man like personality they will not adhere to any specific code of conduct and many behave some sometimes like mad men do not mad in the least sometimes like those possessed by the devil and more often than not like children sesadri swami gal of tri trivanmalai Truvannamalai used to behave like a madman. He used to enter into any house and throw away all the food cooked and kept ready. He used to throw away the goods kept in some of the shops into the mud. All those people with whom he behaved like that got immense material prosperity and spiritual benefits too. Swami Nityananda of was raised worry near bombay used to threaten abuse and throw stones at people who dared visit him in his cave like men possessed and used to fill the hands of children with sweets and toffees jesus christ was once feeling hungry and approached a fig tree by the side of the road he found nothing at all on the tree except leaves disappointed he pronounced may no fruit ever come from you again the fig tree withered at once that this is in saint matthew 21-18 is not this act like that of a child which chides the ground where it happens to stumble and fall no notwithstanding all the problems of recognition a jivan mukta has a distinct and subtle fragrance of his own which refuses to remain hidden a divine glow on his face and an undeniable vibration emanating from his body bestowing peace soothing and calming the <coughs> agitated minds of those aspirants who happen to meet him these vibrations will reveal themselves more forcefully to those who have developed an intuitive insight on account of the spiritual practices sadhana done by them and those who are equipped with the knowledge of the general characteristics of jivan mukta what do we gain by recognizing a jivan mukta number 1 if once we can recognize jivan mukta we may seek and cultivate his holy company satsanga keeping such company of the holy man alone can lead us to the state of jivan mukti as averred by shrimad bhagavatam if one is lucky enough one may be able to choose such a jivan mukta as one's personal guru preceptor that alone is sufficient to make mukti liberation a fit a comply number 2 many self styled teachers and aspirants who tread the spiritual path and claim to have had some experience like seeking a light hearing the om sound or supernatural voices seeing some visions of god or divine realism realms <coughs> realms acquiring some mystic powers like materialization of the objects just by thinking of them or divining the thoughts in another's mind through telepathy etc are apt to be something deluded into thinking that they have become enlightened jivan muktas now this is all a bar a the, the, this is a checkmate checkmate this is a hurdle in the path of liberation so these are called siddhis they are dangerous they are not good for sadhakas a knowledge of the essential characteristics of a jivan mukta will serve as a checklist for self assessment as to whether or not they have actually reached that state or not one of the simplest acid test given in the scriptures is that any saint who is interested in collection and accumulation of money and prosperity for whatever noble reason it may be as also anybody who is interested in sexual sports cannot be a knower of the self incidentally such a knowledge 
about G1 Mukta's would protect an aspirant from falling into a wrong company under a delusion. Third, thirdly, even those who seek material prosperity and advancements tend to benefit by going to G1 Mukta's whose very presence confers on them the fulfillment of all other desires. Many people are fascinated by the various mystic powers demonstrated by some persons who are mistakenly taken to be Jeevan Mukta. In Yoga Vasistha, Sri Rama poses a beautiful question, why is it that the Jeevan Muktas never demonstrate the mystic powers Siddhis like journeying through the sky, levitations, etc.? The reply given by Maharishi Vasistha is, Ordinary persons still in the boundaries of the phenomenal world who have not had self-realization can cultivate such powers through certain occult means. A knower of the self, a Jeevan Mukta will not go after the acquisition of such powers, Siddhis, as he is wholly content. This is in Lagu Yoga Vasistha in his own self and these mystic powers are all products of ignorance what to speak of the glory of a jivan mukta even long after a jivan mukta leaves his body the smadhi where the body lies entered continues to confer fulfillment of the material desires as immense spiritual benefits to the devotees who circumambulate the samadhi and or pray to that saint. Those disembodied saints also become the gurus of some earnest seekers and continue to guide them. It is presumably because wide Brihadarnaka opens the vital life force prana and the forces responsible for speech etc. of a human mukta do not go anywhere else after death but continue to be earthed and absorbed in that very place historically in the omnipresent brahma thus the vibrations continue for a very very long time to cite an instance one mr dixit of bangalore an ex air force officer settled in the usa had come to sri ramanasram at trivanamlai during Late 2000, early 2001, one day he stayed barged into my room in the evening and began to rave and rant as to how he came to the ashram with a lot of spiritual expectations and found that the ashram had deviated from the path of knowledge instructed by Bhagwan Ramana and hence he was going back the next day morning so sorely disappointed by not having attained anything in the ashram. I was gazing at him helplessly the next day early in the morning he again came to my room with bag and baggage and with tears in his eyes and told me swamiji i am sorry for my ramblings yesterday i have since got what i wanted in fact bhagwan ramana has given me more than what i bargained for he went away immediately even before i could ask him as to what he had wanted and what he got the Swami, the Swami just mentioned is Swami Shantananda Giri. He has written this piece about Jivan Mukti. So, dear friend, the remaining part of this article I will describe in the next video. So thank you for patiently listening to this video. Please press subscribe my channel, like, comment, and please share the video. Thank you. Namaste, namaste.